I want folks to know that there are copies of the Mansfield Charter on the table and available. And also, um, Jefferson Township here in Bucyrus, or in Crawford County, has already passed a non-binding resolution against injection wells. So we want to provide those as templates, and Polk Township as well. We want to provide those as templates as something that can be done. And I know in Mansfield, um, you know, to our credit, when we were told in 2011 that um, they, the injection well owner had leased the property, ODNR had approved the permit, and there was nothing that the residents or the city could do to stop the toxic waste from being brought in by rail car. We worked together. The law director was, you know, the, the city council and law director was amazing. Um, the residents pulled together, and we passed this charter amendment, and we don't have the injection well. So the communities that take action and make a stand have a better chance of preventing the inundation of toxic waste than those that are either not educated about it or are not taking action. I just wanted to make that point. Um, like Chris said, it doesn't want to be all gloom and doom and that we're going to be polluted on and there's nothing we can do. By educating, discussing it, providing tools, we hope that um, uh, folks within Crawford County will be empowered to take some type of action. Yes. Uh, what's happening with, didn't Cincinnati put a ban on all injection wells? And, and it seems so simple and elegant. And what's happening with that? Why can't other communities do that? Um, I would have to look into that specifically. I remember hearing about that. Um, if I remember correctly. I'm I, from Cincinnati. I okay. helped on that. Oh, so okay. I can actually it. speak Go to that. It. I'm not an attorney, disclaimer, first of all. but. <laughs> Um, I, I lived in Cincinnati and I was one of the people who advocated for that and uh, what we did is exactly what Chris is talking about is without using the words oil and gas. We asserted that yeah. uh, disposal of waste by injection was prohibited as a zoning use. You know, it was, I mean it was less than two or three sentences was the modification in the zoning. Can you speak louder? Oh sorry, okay so we just prohibited uh, waste disposal by injection as a zoning use, so you could not in any zone of Cincinnati do waste disposal by injection, whether it's oil and gas or anything else. So uh, we did not use the words oil and gas because that would have triggered the preemption that he was talking about. Is it, how's it working? It's still standing and they have not tried to permit any injection wells in Cincinnati. So um, we, we, the reason that we did that was a to provide a model because we had legal resources and Jim O'Reilly who was a professor of law at the University of Cincinnati <clears throat> who has written books about zoning and stuff like that in the state of Ohio and in this this whole wrangling over you know local control over the years and so we had someone who was providing us with the model a and B we became aware that the industry was looking into Cincinnati as potentially an ideal target for injection wells, even though we're far away from the shale areas, there is a significant amount of rail infrastructure that comes through the area, as well as a nice confining layer in what is called the Mount Simon Sandstone. So uh, it's, Cincinnati was being targeted back when they were trying to do the carbon sequestration from the coal plants <coughs> as an ideal area for, for because of that sandstone. So there's kind of a nice pocket for the oil and gas industry if they feel like shipping this stuff by rail. What about boat and also the backlash from oil and gas when you guys did that? What what did you get backlash from? Um, they caught wind of it way too late. Oh. They <laughs> uh, the American Natural Gas Association sent someone to the committee hearing when they were going to vote on it after it had already come out of committee. It had already been debated, and she showed up in a, in a huss, and um, she demanded that she got to they delay the committee the council hearing meeting just so that she could have a private meeting with them so I'm not sure what you want to talk about in private besides maybe getting out the checkbook but, uh, she was too late well I wish other communities would do or could do that that's fantastic there's no reason they could if they had zoning and you had no existing injection wells correct no we did not if you look at the map for the state of Ohio too it's um, <laughs> Not to dismiss in any way, but the, I was just pulling it up. So most of the existing wells, jumping in and correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, are s mainly in the eastern part of the state going from the northeastern to the southeastern, although there are a few in the northwest quadrant of the state. But um, I, I don't disagree that it's a good organizing tool. Mm -hmm. 
and, and part of what we're what we're working on here is that as the shale plays develop in the eastern part of the state, the, the waste stream is going to be pushed further and further west as well. And they're going to be looking for areas like Crawford County, like Brian said, they, they were on the rail lines. Um, Athens is really under the gun since Chris, Chris mentioned them because they're, they want to barge the waste in from other states up the Ohio River to Athens. And um, unfortunately for Athens, they've already got existing injection wells and they also have a $30 million annual local foods industry that's being threatened by these injection wells. Local government doesn't want the wells. Um, the commissioners, county commissioners, the city officials have tried every maneuvering that they can, holding their own public hearings, and yet ODNR continues to permit the um, toxic waste wells and the uh, inundation of that into their community. So again, back to Crawford County, there are no injection wells here, and it hasn't become a threat yet. Um, one thing that maybe Brian will get into, I don't want to get too far off, and, and our speaker Melanie is here, and she'll be speaking next on a general oh, overview. Um, thanks for driving up from Columbus. Yeah. But um, the old Clinton sandstone wells that we do have here in Crawford County could be converted into a waste well. So there is a threat, and, uh, you know, somewhat of a, uh, let's, let's take a look at this and see what can be done kind of a, an effort is what we're making here. Uh, any one one last question for Chris or Chris any last <coughs> comment? No, I, I don't have any comments, any questions? I, I would just echo that I think you know Brian's idea what they're doing in Cincinnati that sounds like a great idea um, to play devil's advocate and not be negative. Um, it, you know the zoning you're, you might still run into that problem that we saw um, what county was that? Um, was it Newburgh County, I think? You know, you may run into that where they're saying, well, you're effectively banning fracking through your zoning ordinances. You may run into a problem like that. That was an Ohio Supreme Court case from 1992. Again, that's just to play devil's advocate, but I think it's a good idea to start. And like I said, it'll be very interesting to see what comes of the Monroe Falls case when that decision is issued, because that could give a lot of power back to the municipalities through zoning. Zoning is a powerful tool. And um, you know, if you talk to any real estate attorney, they're going to tell you that zoning is as old as any law in America on the books. Because it all starts from there. If you're going to build a community from scratch, that's the first thing you have to do because of the concerns that we talked about. You don't want an injection well or any other industrial type of thing in your backyard. You're going to separate those out. One, I, I, I know it's been used. In, in other circumstances in municipalities, is there any outlet using eminent domain to uh, to uh, turn away fracking uh, a municipality possibly saying, we need this for some other purpose, and thereby uh, would that conflict with 1509, or could, could that also be an avenue? I mean, I suppose it's possible, but it would probably be, appear pretty blatant yeah. If it's, you know, if the, city, the, city, has, yeah, yeah, if the city has no interest in the land and then, yeah, someone comes in and then the city says, oh, wait a minute, we need that land, it's probably going to look pretty suspicious. I'm talking more in a pro preemptive way, you know, just like saying this is set aside for this purpose. You can always try that. The problem then comes, you know, if what happens when you have a private landowner who wants to sell their yeah. property. I think that's the situation. I mean, you know, I, I suppose it, it's a potential creative possibility. Okay. It's a possibility. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, uh, does Ontario have any legislation on the books with drilling yet? To my knowledge, they do not. But that is not necessarily... Okay. The reason I'm asking is uh, Crestline Water, our underground lakes are in Ontario. Mm -hmm. actually comes from there. I mean, we have to, we're covering two counties. Yeah. And I didn't know whether... I hadn't heard if Ontario had any legislation or? I don't know that they do. They may. I haven't heard of it, Bill. I think you would probably know. I mean, not to put you on the spot, but I presume it's something that we would hear about. Right. And they haven't passed anything. And as we've discussed, when we get ready to move to some type of resolution in Crestline, I intend to approach uh, the Ontario Council and at least well, connect and them up with the water source. They were very much aware of what Mansfield was doing. And if I recall, there were several municipalities that were 
considering passing resolutions and waiting to see where ours went. I know, yeah, certainly some officials have considered it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, that's a perfect example of using um, Ohio Constitution Section 1.19b, the property rights of groundwater. I mean, that's Crestline's water. So there you don't even have to get to a per se environmental argument. You can say, look, that's our water and we want it kept clean. Perhaps that there's something Crestline could do, and I would, you know, suggest talking to your local law director and really pushing on that point because I think that's where you're going to get a lot of rights to protect that water. It's yours if it's Crestline's, like you're telling me. Because there, you know, there's a lot of development around it, you know, homes and that type of thing, mm -hmm. and and you know, I just didn't, I hadn't heard. But I thought maybe you would. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know that Ontario has, but I think, like you said, um, if that is Crestline's water, you know, there's a property right and that might be the best way to go about protecting that water. Well, thank you very much, Chris. No problem.